Yeah, I, I've, I, I, I don't know. It's tough. I think Florida State's the best defense they'll have seen all year. The offensive line's terrible, so yeah. Do you, TJ, still trust in Mike Norvell? Yeah, Florida State wins. Like, Florida State... <laughs> like, <laughs> Welcome, college football fans, to another Inside Insight episode, the series where I bring on a content creator or super fan that covers Miami's opponent each week so they can tell us a little bit more about their team. And today is by far the guest that was requested the most by Canes fans. This guy right over here is probably on multiple most wanted posters if you were to ask around Kane's Twitter because he really knows how to rile up the Miami fan base and get them pretty angry with him. So, TJ, uh, in case any of the viewers are not familiar, if you could take just a moment to introduce yourself and let them know where they can find you. Sure, yeah. So I'm TJ Pittenger. I, I host a show called Double Fries No Slaw covering FSU football. And... Uh, over on YouTube, and then also just this year started a, a show called College Football Addiction that uh, covers um, just all general college football. There, there's a little Florida State stuff there, but it's really just kind of like the national scene, and uh, Florida State obviously not been relevant in that national scene this year, so there's even less content uh, about Florida State over there. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you having me, Coop. Absolutely. So uh, this is you know some really awesome circumstances uh, that we have here. Uh, I love meeting in this way for these Inside Insight episodes. Uh, but I do have to say something here. The fans are going to be pretty upset with me if I give you the soft questions. So mm -hmm. we got to start off with, you know, a couple of tough ones here. So I do need to ask, because this is a very hot topic when it comes to Florida State fans. Do you put any of these losses on the guy who did not eat the dog crap out of the Red Solo Cup? Do you believe that he jinxed the game because he did not do that after the Memphis loss. I don't. Okay. And I probably should because it'd just be easier. But, like, if our guys are throwing picks because they're thinking about a guy that's, like, eating or not eating dog crap, like, if our guys are missing blocks or just dropping balls in the end zone, like you, we talked about on my show, like, Crumman Hawk throws a 50-yard dot and our fifth year senior, like maybe that would, should have been what he said in the post game press conference. Like, well, I was going to catch it, but then I thought about that guy, not even the dog <laughs> crap. And I was like, you know, I don't want this touchdown that bad. Like he needs to learn his lesson from letting down the fan base. So unfortunately not, I don't believe in jinxes as much. I think you're kind of the same way, but I, I don't really, but it is a convenient target to go after. I mean, they're not blaming me. Usually people blame me for stuff. So yeah. I'm, I'm good with, I guess I am. No, I, I take that back. Yeah. It's his fault. Don't blame me. Blame him. Do you think that this is the worst Florida State offense of all time? I, you know, it's hard to know stuff from before the 70s or 80s, right? But I mean, certainly the worst of my lifetime. You know, Bobby Bowden in his first year took over a three and eight team. And in Bobby's first year, we went five and six. So it's hard to, and then obviously Bobby never went under 500 again after that, had the longest bull streak in history. So it, I mean, it's certainly worse than any of those, you know? And so, uh, yeah, in my lifetime, in the last 50 years, absolutely. Again, I, I don't pretend to know what happened when we started the program in 1948. But, uh, yeah, I, I would say that even back then, it was probably not this inept. I mean, we didn't score an offensive touchdown against Duke. We scored one touchdown against Memphis. Like, it's got to be pretty bad. You know, even back then in the 40s and 50s, not pretending to know that, I would just assume that it is the worst of all time, especially respective to the talent. Like, Florida State mm -hmm. is not devoid of talent. And so... Yeah, maybe in the 40s they were worse, but, uh, you know, they were all girl school, like, right before that. So, like, yeah, it probably wasn't very much talent there. But, yeah, respective to talent, it is the worst. I'll just go ahead and say that. You know, I don't need to go watch film from back then. I'll just say yes. <laughs> Do you, TJ, still trust in Mike Norvell? I mean, he climbed every year up until number five, but now it's like a, a catastrophic drop-off. Yeah, I, I've – I I – I don't know it's tough <laughs> long term. So long term, I think there's a couple of ways to look at that question. Long term, do I think he can turn the program around and mm -hmm. get it back to prominence of 10 plus win seasons? I mean, just being very frank, I don't. 
And I don't think that has as much to do with Mike Norvell as it just has to do with college football. It's really hard for coaches to rebuild a program just in general. Like look at the average coaching tenure. It is three years. And so it's, it's hard in general for a coach to turn a program around. It's unheard of for a coach to turn a program around twice. And so, yeah, Mike Norvell coming into a different situation with his past experiences and knowing like what he knows now, I'm confident that he could be fine. Like if Florida state was just had been mediocre for the last three years and then Mike Norvell gets hired, I think he could probably get them to, to be pretty fine. Cause he did do it once, but the idea that he could potentially do it twice is pretty hard for me. And it's going to take some pretty drastic changes in staff, in uh, mindset, in focus on recruiting. And, um, you know, the big question to me is he might even do all that. He might change the staff. He might change his approach to recruiting. He might change his mindset and he might do all the things the right way, build a program the right way. Um, but you don't even know if it's going to work out. You know, like Mario didn't hire especially well his first time. He replaced no. both coordinators. He had to move on. Well, Mike Norvell might replace both his coordinators and a bunch of his staff, but Who's to say that those guys are going to work out? Like you're going to let him replace his coordinators twice from, from right now. And so, yeah, am I confident in Mike Norvell? Like his ability, like he didn't just forget how to coach offense. He didn't just forget how to inspire guys to win 19 games in a row or 23 in two years. Like he didn't just, so it, confidence in Mike Norvell, maybe confidence in Mike Norvell at Florida state. It's pretty low right now. Like I'd be pretty surprised if he was able to turn it around again. Okay. Is this season, do you think, it's more of a, a player problem or a coaching problem or a combination of the two. Well, the coaches pick who the players are in this sport, right? Like it's not like, it's not like NFL where your GM is making those decisions or, or uh, other things. So yeah, it all does fall back on him. Right. And so, yes, there, there are aspects of a player problem without a doubt, but who picked those players, <laughs> you know, like Mike Norvell is yeah. picked them. So yeah, I'd say it's more on coaching. I don't think they've done a good job of putting guys in positions to be successful. I don't think they've done a good job of recruiting certain positions. They've done a good job. Their defensive line is pretty good. Their secondary is pretty good. I like their running backs, but um, yeah, they, they've not done a good job of, of staffing the roster in a good way. And then I also don't think they've done a good job of putting guys in positions. You, you, the, the thing that made Saban so good, not comparing anyone to Saban, but was he was able to adjust to what, and, and the best coaches really are. They were able to adjust their style based on their players. Mm -hmm. And I think Mike Norvell is asking this team to do things that the last two teams did. And this team cannot operate like mm -hmm. a Jordan Travis led team, a, a team with Jared verse, a team with the, that kind of talent. And so I don't think Mike Norvell has done a, a very good job of that adjusting to the talent that he has. And then again, I, I think there's obviously a drop off in the, in the talent itself too. And so, yeah, I, I lean more coaching, but players is a big problem. But again, player to me is a chicken or egg thing like well the coaches right. are the ones who brought him in what would be one of your biggest concerns going up against miami specifically like is it is it miami's d-line cam ward uh what what worries you most about this miami team um, my biggest concern about this game is getting on the plane to go down there. Like just having to actually play the game is probably my biggest concern. Like, I don't know if Florida state can 2020 Clemson this thing and just COVID yourself out of it, but that would be the way that I would see like some amount of joy happening in my life at about 7 PM on Saturday night. So yeah, on a serious note, uh, I, th I am not taking anything away from Cam Ward. People that watch college football addiction know that I've called him a, a Heisman front. Like I have I am not taking it, but I do like Florida state's defense. I, I will say like he okay. actually doesn't, I think Florida state's the best defense they'll have seen all year. Now, how much is that going to matter? I don't know. I still think Miami scores 30 plus like, I, but I do think that the defense with a semi-competent offense could have a chance. Now Cam will go for six touchdowns because I've said this, let's, let's be very fair that that's how life works. But Cam actually, a Heisman, a guy that is leading the Heisman odds and who I think right now today would win the Heisman doesn't worry me as much as the defense and the defensive front specifically. Florida State's going to be down at least three offensive linemen that they started the year with. That's and tough. Miami has the best defensive line in certainly the ACC top five in college football, in my opinion. And so as I'm not taking anything away from Cam Ward, people are going to get in these comments and say, he's a Cam Ward hater. I am not. Yeah, you Cam Ward hater. Come on. Give <laughs> but, <some> credit, TJ. <laughs> I, yeah, he's a miracle worker. Okay. Like I, I like Cam Ward a lot and I like his swagger. And I like his confidence, but I, I have a little bit of faith in our defense, 
I have zero faith in the offense against Miami's front. Their linebackers, their defensive line are so good. And I, that worries me about Florida State, like even being able to be competent. I talked with you about them having the highest drop rate in, in college football. Before the Duke game, they had the worst, 134th rushing attack in college football. Like they are putrid. Pitiful, pitiful. And so like Cam Ward is better to me than Miami's defense, but how bad Florida State's offense is, that's why the defense worries me more than even a Heisman winner. Biggest strength and weakness for the Florida State team. This is going to sound hilarious. I went on the radio with Bill King after the Boston College game, and he asked me, TJ, what is the uh, what are the positives from this season? Mm -hmm. And somewhat joking, I said, and, and that was when we were 0-2, right? It wasn't the dumpster fire that it quite is now, but it was still pretty bad. I said, well, the fans have shown up every game, and so like both games have been sellouts, and the band sounds really good when they actually let them play on third down. And I said, and so he busted out, you know, he thought that was hilarious. And I said, okay, but being serious, like our kicker just hit three from 50 plus over the last couple of weeks. Like he's really good. And I know Borgallis is good too, but I, I do think the special teams just in general and the punter too, he's up for the Ray guy. Like he's a really good punter. Now he gets more action than anyone in the country because he gets to punt so often with this offense when we're not turning the ball over. But I do like our special teams. We had a kick return for a touchdown. We almost broke another one earlier. We've had some really good punt returns. Like I think we cover kicks well. Now, again, because I'm saying this, we'll give up a punt return touchdown to, to somebody. But, I, you know, I do think special teams has been a positive, has been a bright spot. Um, I, I think the defensive line has played a little bit better over the last few weeks. I think the secondary is pretty talented. And, you know, secondary for secondary, I would take Florida State's guys over over Miami's, just being fair. Okay. Um, but when you can't get any, when you're struggling to get pass rush, when you're, you know, on the field all day, the secondary, you know, is only as good as the guys in front of them. So there are a few positives on this team. You know, they haven't quit. That's a very low bar, I think. But they they played with good effort, even against, my, even against Clemson and, and Duke. They've played with pretty good effort. Um, I think they'll play with really good effort on Saturday night, at least in the first half. And then if you get down 30 and you kind of quit in the, then the fourth quarter, like whatever, I don't, you know, at that point the fans are tuned out anyway. So there are some positives, but I am scraping the bottom of the barrel talking about the punter and the energy and the, and the effort, um, on that side, biggest concerns I, again, offensively, they're, they're just so challenged. They didn't score an offensive touchdown against Duke. They had one against Memphis. That's really bad, you know, and they, even when they've driven the ball, they've, I think they've had like five or six turnovers on the other side of the 50, you know, so like taking score with a kicker who has hit made five field goals, I believe from. 50 plus yards you've had five turnovers i mean right there that's 15 points not that that's changing a lot of things but like that the kicker is i don't want to say automatic but like he is really good and you're just giving possessions away and so offensively like that's the biggest concern like the 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 quarterbacks a freshman his five starts in college football are uh georgia louisville clemson miami all top 15 teams that's rough they played duke yeah they wow. played duke last week so he's you know I think he'll be fine in the future. I think he's a power four quarterback, like whether that's at Florida state or not, I don't know, but I do think he's a, he's a power four quarterback. He just, he's still young and, and had an absolute gauntlet to go through. And, um, you know, the wide receivers can't catch the, the blockers can't block and the running backs aren't finding any holes because the offensive line's terrible. So yeah, concerns like, yes, would have just been an easier answer, I guess, to give you. Okay. So that this is, this is actually the perfect transition over into my next question, which is, an impact player on each side of the ball. And the kicker doesn't count and the punter doesn't count. I, I need a guy on offense. I need a guy on defense. Because then I even had on my notes here, my next question was to ask how your kicker is this year because I feel like he's going to be, you know, having to kick some 40, 50-plus yarders, but you already answered that. So I need yeah. impact on both sides of the ball. Give me one. Yeah, I'm frustrated that you won't let me use the the kicker or punter here. Oh. But uh, Tough yeah, questions here. Tough questions. <laughs> Impact on offense, you know, let's do defense first. So I okay. do really like, um, I, I like Josh Farmer. I think he's played really well. I think he's made himself some money. Um, you know, that's the, is that the defensive tackle defensive tackle okay. that has been really good and, and his motor has been really good. And I, I'm not trying to take anything away from him. I, there's nothing left to play for, for this season, but I mean, guys are playing for their NFL futures and he is still balling out. And I don't care if he's playing for the logo on his shirt or the colors, like just go out and play hard. I don't care if it's for yourself. Like you think, you know, you think 
Michael was really playing because he loved Chicago. No, he was playing because he loved himself, right? Like he loved, he loved being the best. And so Farmer has put that effort forth and he's been really good. And so like, he's probably the guy that I would say is the biggest impact uh, for Florida State's defense. They've got a lot of talent on that side of the ball. You know, I think Pat Payton's played fairly well. Even Daryl Jackson, former Kane, has played better in the last couple of weeks. And in the secondary, I, I still really like the linebackers have gotten better as the year's gone on. Um, so there, there's some pieces on that defense, but I think I'd say Farmer's probably at the top of it. Um, and then offensively, I mean, that is just so tough. I like Lawrence to Philly a lot. I think he's a really good running back. For some reason, Mike Norvell continues to go away from him and uh, he'll have like an amazing first drive where he's just like running through everybody. And then like, we won't see him again until the third quarter. I'm just like, what in the world is going on over here? Like, why is this happening? Now, I believe that Cam Davis is going to be out for this game too. True freshman running back who had a pretty good game last week against Duke. Um, got his knee twisted and, and ended up fumbling on a drive that Florida State was driving to, to try and take the lead. Um, but I think that that will force them to go to Toa Philly a little bit more. They have some wide receivers that I like. Like, I like Hakeem Williams, and I like some of the guys, but they just haven't been consistent enough. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, maybe I'll, I'll give you one. I know you asked for one. Landon Thomas is a wide res- or is a tight end that was, a, was at one time a five-star, ended up as a four-star because he didn't end up signing with Georgia. But he, uh, you know, did – he, he's been pretty good at times. He's he his first touchdown, his first catch was a touchdown pass. He's been pretty dynamic. He's a you know he, he's not like a Jeremy Shockey or anything like that, but he's a really high four star tight end that okay. um, is very athletic. Can certainly if you can put the ball on him, he catches it more often than not. And uh, he's he's kind of an impact guy. Now again, I don't know that he can take over a game and and win it for you, but he could make a couple of plays in a game that maybe you're not expecting. Just a couple more quick hitters here, and then we're going to get to picks and score predictions, which I know everyone is ready and waiting for, myself included. Could you give me a major key for Florida State to win this game or even just stay in it and keep it close? Yeah, I mean, this is so I, – I hate this answer, but they just have to be a little more fundamental than they've been, right? Okay. Like like no turnovers or one turnover. Like I think there's – I mean, I think there's a chance that Cam could throw you a ball or two. Like he's going to play like Brett Favre, and he's going to make six great plays and one or two boneheaded plays in, in, in just about every game. And so there's a chance that like you could – if you could win the turnover battle, like be a little more fundamental than Miami, if you could, again, be in fundamental, if you could not drop the ball, right? They've, they've really struggled with drops and they're, they lead the country. Don't say we're not number one in a new thing. We lead the country in drops. Um, if you could, if you could be a little more fundamental there, um, th- that would be kind of your path to staying in it. Now I, I do not have the illusions that Florida state could find a way to win but that is your path to kind of stay in it and stay competitive and then you know you get in the fourth quarter and and see if some crazy things can happen but i I don't think that yeah i think that's it you just got to be more fundamental they've they've not they've not done anything special but they've not even done the simple things right this year and so like to me staying in this game means just doing the simple things right and i I honestly i don't have a lot of confidence they do but we'll see okay fair now before we get to the final pick i do like to ask this on the tail end of these videos do you have any bold predictions for fun? Disclaimer, guys, for fun. You're not saying that, that, that you believe this is going to happen necessarily, but like any crazy something that, that you want to throw out there? Yeah, Florida State wins. Like Florida State. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, you can clip it if you want. One. Yeah, I'll clip it. I don't that's care. That's a good one. Yeah, Florida State. Um, plays the game of their lives cam ward throws two pick sixes and uh they win it on a walk-off 53 yard field goal by uh by ryan fitzgerald like they get up for the game they got up for the game against clemson if not for two busted coverages like that game would have been a two you know like it would have been a game close um yeah florida state plays their best game of the year they get up for the rivalry and they find a way to win (laughs) you need some of these (laughs) And then after so, after the win, I'll light this up in the house, and we'll we'll have it. You know, I'll have you on on Saturday night to to talk about it. I will. De- I will definitely <laughs> come on if if that happens. Hey, I'll man up. I'll my be here. Get, all right. My wife will get pissed off at me smoking in the house. But she'll be fine. <laughs> I think for that one, hey, it's worth it, right? It's she'll worth be being in the doghouse for twenty four to forty eight hours <laughs> to light up a victory cigar. If you can take down the number six ranked undefeated Miami Hurricanes, no. you know. So with that being said, bold prediction out of the way now. Let's get to the real prediction. And TJ, uh, see what you guys don't know. You you guys need to go check out his channel because I actually just did an interview with him before this. 
So I can't hit him with the same joke. I, I told him in his video, hey, yo, man, I think this is going to be close. It's going to come down to the wire because I wanted to see his uh, facial expression, his reaction to it. So if you want to see that raw, he didn't he didn't know it was coming. Go check out the interview on his channel. Go talk some trash, you know, down in his comment section. So I can't hit him with that. You guys already know what my score prediction is, 48 to 10. Miami currently a 20 and a half point favorite. I got them winning by 38. Uh, I've said many times that I think it's important that Miami actually does get some style points in this one. I always say week in and week out, win by one or 100. I just want a W because this yeah. has been a magical season so far. It's the one year with Cam Ward. Just keep winning. I don't care about the ranking, none of that stuff right now. But I think this is one where it's personal for Mario Cristobal. He's not beat Florida State yet. It's at Hard Rock. He made that statement, you know, about the shoe being on the the other foot coming up sometime soon. You have to win big in this one. So I have 48 to 10. What do you got, TJ? All right. All joking aside and no more bold predictions. I think Florida State wins 28 to 27. No, I'm just fine. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, – I don't know. I, I I tend to think that Miami will run it up as well. I haven't even I haven't really thought of a score prediction for mine too. But I, I I think you're somewhere in the ballpark. Like it would it would surprise me if Miami doesn't get into the 40s. Maybe I'll say they're just under that. Maybe I, I do think that Florida State will try and take some of the air out of the ball. I think they'll play bend don't break defense to try and use as much clock as they can and not get beat deep on stuff. Um, and and that way it just you know if you can keep Miami in the 30s and then you can get in the teens, it just looks a little better. Um, so I don't know, like 38 to 13, you know, would, would maybe be like a best case scenario to me. I know that that's, I'm predicting a 25 point loss there, but that's to me, like if you can take the air out of the ball, run it a lot, you know, maybe have some sustained drives that you can, even if they end in field goals, if they're like six or seven minutes, you're using up half the quarter, like to me. And, and then you make Miami have long sustained drives. Don't let them beat you over the top. Um, and, and use a lot of clock to me, that's kind of a, I mean, that's a crappy moral victory to lose by 25 against your rival, but that would be kind of a best case scenario to me. So because I'm sunshine and roses, right? Like 38 to 13, I'll go with for now. Okay. All right. And, uh, and you bring up some great points, right? Because the one thing Miami is going to do is score points. They're averaging 48 points per game, but it's a little tough to score points. Uh, if the offense doesn't get the ball very often. So you come in, win the time of possession battle. I've said Florida State's, you know, got to be aggressive. They got to come out, play free, take some chances. What, what, what do you got to lose? Sure. Really? I mean, the, the season cannot be salvaged at this point. You've won one game. But if they could come out and say, hey, even a bad Florida State team can still beat the Miami Hurricanes, obviously they'd love that. But yeah, even just keeping it close could still be a good look for the program. It, it could be looked at. Nobody likes to talk about moral victories, but it could be looked at as a, a positive step. You know, a step in the right direction a bit. Yeah, so, I mean, my Mario sold that last year. Mario sold like this is their best team in a long time, and we lost by seven. We're, like, yeah. we're this close. Like he he specifically used that, and it was written about in in recruiting articles afterward. Like Miami is selling this close loss. Like, hey, we're this close. Come help us get over the top. And so, yeah, if Florida State was to lose this game by seven, right, they're not going to take any less crap from Miami fans, right? Like you still lost, you still broke the three game winning streak, but. Florida State fans are like, if I offered you that, if I offered that to any Florida State fan right now, like 98% are taking it and 2% yeah. are like, nah, just give me, you know, put it all on black. Right. But I, I think 98% of fans are. So yeah, if Florida State could somehow find a way to keep this to a one score game or lose by 10 or something. I think they'd be thrilled to not get embarrassed because an embarrassment is coming. And so I think that they want that. They, they want to try and keep it close if they can. TJ, I always ask at the end of the video, the Miami Hurricanes have something that's known all around the world. Uh, I think Florida State fans have something they can do that's that's pretty known as well. You can do yeah. it or not do it. Like this. Oh boy, <laughs> that's not what I expected actually. Like but this. okay, okay. <laughs> oh, you just fired up. You fired up the comments yeah. right there, guys. I better see hundreds. If if you are a viewer on this and you are a Miami fan, you better leave a comment. All right. TJ, we appreciate you. Thank you for taking time out of your afternoon. And let's just say I am very much. Looking forward to this game on Saturday night. That, that makes one of us. So thanks for having me, buddy. <laughs> All right. Peace out, bro. See you, buddy.